What age were you when you started shooting? Twelve. And you've been doing it ever since? Yes. I shot my first flying pigeon. I think it was twelve. Yeah. Oh, I've been younger. Shot a 410 poacher's gun at first, shooting rabbits. Yeah. I was on that for a couple of years. And then went on to the old man's Thomas Wilde side by side. Shot my first flying pigeon coming out of a Dutch barn. Heard its wings clatter, spun round, swung through, and nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. That's one more than you've done today, then. Um, good. Yeah, my, my dad, my dad left left me an air rifle, BSA Cadet, I think it was something like that. I can remember him shooting a spider in the cupboard under the stairs with an apple stalk because it had frightened me mother to death. That is a good start to a shooting career. Yeah, spider shooting with apple stalks. Yeah. I did have air rifles before the shotguns, obviously. Yeah. Air pistol and an air rifle. An old BSA underlever. Still got all the guns. I'll get them out one day and show you. Behind you. Oh, the gun wasn't in the shoulder because yeah. it was a turn around -y job. Yeah. And it didn't come out of a Dutch barn, I suppose. Exactly. Yeah. See, I've still got a couple of air rifles. I've just gone back to... That stirred them up. I've just gone back to a Springer, which is really good. I don't want a decoy yet. We're a bit early. Well, you should have told them what time to come then, shouldn't you? Huh. There we go, ferals, ferals, ferals. Go away. Sometimes brings them in behind as a woody. Come in, yeah, down my left. I don't care how much you move. Swinging wild. Mm. Now they're maybe going to turn into the. No, they're not ready yet. They're not ready? Well, sit down then. But saying that, you never know, because oh. some have swung in. What's happened to your Arctic camo shorts, by the way? Because you were whittling on about them, I got these old shorts this morning. You mean you, mean you were embarrassed by them? Went to the haberdashery, got some needle and thread, and sewed the pockets of these up. Oh. So now these have got Not. more life. Okay. As long as they last a day, I'm not bothered. And it Shorts your preferred footwear for um, pigeon shooting? Well, funnily enough, not in winter. No? I thought you'd be like a postman. They always seem to wear shorts for everything. Do they shoot many pigeons though? No. No. I'm not in... I'm not in go out the back. I'm not intimating that they wear them when they're in the bedroom either, but... You know. Yeah, you're getting the hang of this. You... Feathers? Feathers. Yep. A, make... a lot that... of feathers. That'll make an interesting dinner. What are you having for your dinner? Well, a pillow. Once we get warmed up, <laughs> I'm sure a few more will fall out the sky. I've only just arrived. To get rid of my camera nerves. Camera nerves. There's one. He looks like he's going to decoy beautifully. No, he's gone into the tree. <laughs> Excellent. So you still you still know how to read the birds then? <laughs> oh dear. So what's what? What's what's the purpose of pigeon shooting? Is it for you? Is it for the farmer? A bit of both? Why? Why do you do it? Well, first and foremost, crop protection. 
but we love it as well. Yeah. No, seriously. It, I, st I started shooting for farmers I went to school with. I was doing a bit of shooting and they were like, can you come and get these pigeons off the crop? They're hammering the crop. So I did, and then word spread that I wasn't terrible at it. So then more farmers. This farm we're on today, he was at my first school. So I've known him 40 odd years. Um, but yeah, first and foremost, crop protection. And I enjoy it. It's a challenge. You can eat the meat, which is absolutely delicious. There's multiple factors. Yeah. And, it. And, and the farmers, they're always pretty appreciative, from my experience anyway, from the few farms I've got. They always say, well done, or thanks for coming. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Because he'll, he'll drill this next, and it will thin out all these birds that are going to eat the next lot of crops. So stubble shooting serves a purpose as well as direct protection over laid stuff, growing rape in the winter, all of it, anything that's directly getting hammered, obviously you've got to shoot them, here's a bunch coming out the back. And thinning these, in fact these lot, the field behind us is beans, standing beans. These lot I think are going onto the beans, they're eating some of this spilt stuff off the stubble, but if you watch them they're heading to the beans. But we're trying to pull them off their flight line to the beans. See, they've all carried on. Yeah. There's a field of beans. Yeah. This one would have decoyed, but I was pointing at the beans. <laughs> it's, it's early yet, mate. But it is early. We've just got here. Yeah. Good. And and you do. I know you do a bit of fox shooting. What's what's the most rewarding? Pigeons, foxes, rats, what? One out the back. Your favourite's one out the back? That sounds a bit perverted if you ask me. Let's see if we can have him on the way by. He's miles away. He's turned though. Look at him, he's turned all the way and he's going to land in the bush. <laughs> Excellent. They're just coming out. So they're just starting. Flight line's coming out of town. They're coming out to this stubble and beans. Yeah. It's two o'clock. I've seen big activity here from between four and seven. That's when I think they'll start to decoy properly. And you've, but, you've, you've done us a lovely bale hide, which... But because you've got to go to your knitting class, yeah. we've got, you've got to go early. Well, it's important because otherwise I'll keep dropping stitches, and it's no good. If I'm going to make you, <coughs> if I'm going to make you a scarf for Christmas. Um, so we were saying, pigeon shooting, fox shooting, ducks, geese, rats, rabbits. Love, love all what? an Americanism, but I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Wing shooting. Okay. I love eating everything you can. So in season. I do a few game days, can't afford all these expensive ones. Wild duck shooting, coming into a pond at night, is a favourite. Because it's late harvest this year, on the first, well, first couple of weeks of September, we'll try and get some duck decoys out on the stubbles. Decoy some ducks. Duck, wild duck, delicious. Pheasant, partridge, all delicious. Fox is not delicious, but I shoot for a lot of sheep farmers. Yeah. Also, I went to school with a few, and obviously protect the sheep. Funnily enough, this year, one of the sheep farmers, the vet told him that there's a worm in fox poo that gets into the lambs, knackers up their livers. You can still sell them for market, but they don't grow as well. No. So, hence, he got right onto me when he found this out to get on the foxes. Yeah. Yeah, there's always a there's always a bit of a story with all of these pest control jobs, isn't there? Yeah. I mean, I've I've got a farm where it's the, for no fault of his own crawling with rats. Um probably something to do with the the car junkyard that's next door to the farm, but Yeah, yeah. Um I go up there with the air rifle. Um and his wife who's got the chickens and the 
and the ducks is always asking how I've got on shooting the rats. Um, well, this farmer, he's got pigs at the top in the sheds here. Yeah. There's a lot of pigs. He's got a fair few rats. Uh, ping those off. He has got a contract with a proper pest controller. But you can still come up and ping a few off. You it's mean... going to be a bit of 360 in today. We'll all have ticks and twitches when we're in the care homes, when we're older. Well, that's another subject altogether, ticks. No, twitchy ticks. Because <laughs> you see a fly and you twitch because you think it's a pigeon. Can yeah, just being out in the countryside, and it's not just about killing everything. You can watch what's going on for the farmer. You'll yeah. see all sorts of nature. You just get a feel for what's going on. Do you remember that? That roebuck that we walked, yeah, walked exactly. past us not so long back. Yeah, exactly. We're that not going to kill that. We're no, not shoot was, that. We'll leave him alone. We don't see a lot of stuff. We don't see. We, we see plenty of monties, but we don't see roes around here. So he's worth looking after. It's not, it's not about slaughtering everything. No, no shooter wants to see everything hammered. You got to control. It's conservation as well. Shooting is does a hundred percent go hand in hand with conservation. I don't care what anybody says. Well. The grey, grey partridges on one of my permissions. If we don't keep the foxes down, they'll they'll whittle them away until there's none left. Well, look at the ducks at the pond that we're going to shoot this year. Oh, yeah. yeah, I know we're ultimately going to shoot them, but we're going to eat them. But the foxes the, the fox, ate the lot. The fox had all the ducklings in two sittings, one fox. But he, I've, I've sorted it's it. A hard, I've it's sorted a hard him thing out. to explain and justify killing things. It, it's but, yeah, you know, and they're not just ducks either, they were woodging. It's, um, there is a natural hunting instinct in, in everybody. Yeah. You shouldn't really have to justify it, but with the modern world and the amount of people that don't understand, us humans have created this habitat in a way, so we've got to manage it the best we can. Yeah. We're shooting pigeons over crops that vegans eat. How can there be a true vegan? Everything's killed to produce vegan food. So, anyway, I'm not getting into all that political malarkey. Just as well, mate, because we'll be here all day. I enjoy it. I'm proud of it. So, and there's nothing to hide. And I don't think we should. Change, changing think the subject, so I know I've asked you this before. And here we go. Yeah, but they're not committed, are they? Uh, he's not committed, he's just Billy no mates on his own. So he could have had a crack at him, but he was a bit on a bit rangy and you do want to kill him and not injure them. Right, right, sit your ass down. So I've asked you this before, you've had obviously a connoisseur of fine shotguns. I mean I've I'm a bit biased because I've got an imperial as well, albeit in 20 gauge. You got a favourite shotgun? At the moment, right now, I'm loving shooting this. Yeah. I'm loving yeah. it. The whole Webley and Scott thing, people are going to go, oh, he says Webley and Scott because he does a bit fine and outdoors. It's true, but I wouldn't use a gun I couldn't shoot or didn't enjoy. Yeah. My job is to kind of test out new guns report back to them so they can improve on them and just generally see what the quality is like and stuff but to be honest yeah. like I say I wouldn't shoot them if they were rubbish no, they're I've... fine and for the money for working men Webley and Scott was always all about that anyway yeah they're made in Turkey unfortunately there's just no but is it, you is can't it... get them manufactured in this country anymore can you not for the money not no. for the money you haven't got the people anymore. So at least you've kept... What, what about the guy, the guy that worked at Webley and Scott originally? Didn't he have a big say in how yeah, they manufactured in Turkey? So he's a yeah. master gun maker, yeah. Paul Garrity. He started his apprenticeship at the Webley and Scott factory. So he's been there all his life. And he's got huge influence into how they're still made. So they went through a crap period. I, can't, I don't know who had them at the time. And then we got hold of them, I say we, Highland Outdoors and stuff, and proper 
Yeah. Sorted them out. And Craig. Ooh, we'll have a cheeky right and left then. All this chitty chatter might have calmed the nerves down. Yeah. So, there's a, there's a lot of play people that sort of say, oh, it's just a, a stamp impression of Webley and Scott or whatever make on a gun, and they're all made in Turkey. Yeah, but, and, but not everybody can afford Holland and Holland or Boss or Purdy or whatever. And like you say, if you're a, if you're a plasterer or a bricky, on you these days, and money they charge, speaking from personal experience, they should be able to afford Boss. Um, for most parts, it's for all us, us other guns made mortals. all over the world and in Turkey. There's yeah. apart from your proper fine, expensive English guns, which is brilliant. I wish Webley and Scott Factory was still there. I wish all the English gun makers were still yeah about. But it's all modern times. Everything it's global village, isn't it? Mm. So everything's made everywhere. Do you like that? It's a global village. This is far too intelligent for yeah, a Saturday afternoon. It's far too intelligent for me, mate. I was thinking of village people then, but well, well, cowboys and Indians and the police. You didn't prepare me for this chat, chit chit chat. That's the best way, buddy. That's the best way. <coughs> you're, you're kind of starting to make sense, which is the first time since I've known you. Mm. But people aren't deaf. People know everything about everything because it's all on the internet. So you just find mm. out stuff. Yeah. Well, so let's change the subject again because I'm bored of you talking about village people. Um, thermal versus lamping. What? Undoubtedly, thermal's streets ahead of walking out with a lamp, but isn't there a case of, you know, somebody can't afford, like we've just said about the guns, they can't afford £2,000 for a thermal scope. There's nothing wrong with going out with a red torch, is there? 100% not. I and think that's how we all learn. Exactly. And you learn proper You've got skills. Exactly. So, again, it's great going and buying all the kit. But really, you've got to put in put in a bit of going through the motions of everything and understanding how everything works. Well, you can just get straight for good kit. You'll still learn. You'll still be fine. But will you? Mm. I think you should go lamping. Yeah. Oh, I do. I think everybody should go lamping before they go to thermal experience it. It's like pigeon shooting. People are on about. I do do. We do do some courses, and you can learn, and you can teach the basics. But honestly, unless you just go out and out and fail and fail and fail, that's what, that's what I did, and work it out a bit for yourself. Yeah. I know people haven't got time, so hence we try and give them a bit of heads up knowledge. But really, the only way to do anything is go out and out and out, learn, 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 practice, 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 watch, watch, watch. A bit like Eddie the Eagle. Or is it anything like Eddie the Eagle? Well, have you seen the film? Isn't he not very good at it, though? <laughs> he was I remember him. He was determined. He was determined. He, he so was that's good. Be determined and then you'll become a good he, pigeon shooter. Yeah, or a ski jumper, one of the two. But nobody's, nobody's a good or bad pigeon shooter. If you're going out... And you chuck some decoys out and a few swing into them and you shoot a few. Yep. Happy days. It doesn't make you a bad pigeon shooter if you can't shoot 100 because if you haven't got pigeons in your area, it doesn't make you a bad pigeon shooter. You haven't got the birds there. No. And the on, birds the, on the here side, it saves you money on cartridges. Exactly. The birds in this area come and go. Numbers come and go. And I'm pretty sure they migrate around the country. I know when they're here, and I know when they knob off. They're kind of not here at the moment, but this was... <laughs> I, mean, I, know, I know that. Yeah, but I guarantee, pretty much, pretty much guarantee, these birds will start swinging in between four and seven o'clock. Okay. They'll start to decoy. Of late, it's been late. A bit That's like a double late yeah, in the sentence. Of late, it's been it's late. It's a bit like the night shift at Amazon, then. And here we go. They're just milling about. It's early. They're not interested yet. Okay. You've got to mark my words. Four mm. o'clock onwards. I'm looking forward to they'll it. They'll be piling in like Japs out of the sun. <laughs> You're allowed to say that anymore. 
Um, It'll be boiling. All right. It'll be like Pearl Harbor around here, son. No, it won't. And I'm Ben Affleck. You're Ben Affleck. Right, OK. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh. Politically incorrect. What even is that? Who invented all that? What political Don't correctness? get me started on all that. Don't get me started on all that know. nonsense. Well, we've, we've done... Mate, we've done well so far. Nobody's... Nobody's mentioned the Swedish Doom Goblin. <laughs> we haven't mentioned LGBT, QD, FD, whatever rights. Just good old-fashioned countryman stuff. Bloody hell. Poles in the way, you see? That's got to come down a bit. I've got a mega book of excuses for missus. Yeah. Rambling on to you is one. Honestly, though, I tell you when you shoot best, it's great going out with a mate, me and you shoot all the time. But when you can get right in the zone and you're sat on your own, that's when you shoot well. Yeah. This pole needs to come down. So that so you, do you find sometimes when you're on your own, you sit there and you'll miss and you'll laugh at yourself? Of course, everybody misses. Okay, well as long as you do, because I always laugh at you when you miss. Obviously, I'm trying to learn to shoot <laughs> side by side again, which is coming yes. pretty well to be fair. No, I've, I've done some brilliant shooting with mine, absolutely. I've brilliant. only had it a couple of months and it yeah. hasn't been that busy on the pigeons, so... It's a there's, a there's a load more excuses for you, no, but it does shoot lovely. When you shoot this right, and you get your head down, it's beautiful. Yeah. It is different. Because it's higher in the cone than a traditional. It's just different to shooting an over and under. Yeah. The whole thing, the same but different. No, they're not quite ready, are they? Oh, there's a load. There's a squadron of Japs coming out of the sun. They're not ready yet, though. This is going to kill my back. <laughs> Behind you. Oh, he was just coming in. Lovely. How come, mate? Like I say, it's early. Yeah. I think they're seeing us, we've got a pretty good idea. Yeah, man. We have, we have. Do you remember the other day they were doing this, and then at four o'clock it was like they just switched, started setting the wings and dropped in? Yeah. It's like civil servants getting ready to go home for five, isn't it? At four o'clock, they'll start <laughs> packing their desks away. <laughs> I'm speaking from experience, folks. So, What's, what's the best, simplest piece of kit that you take with you in any sort of shooting? Is it a torch, knife, sandwiches, um, flask of coffee? You, what? You, there can't just really be one. Obviously it's a gun because you're not going to throw stones at them, are you? Uh, this is true. Tell but me how you kill big bags of pigeons. Time, patience and binoculars. Watch them for days. Over your shoulder. Post still annoying, but he went down. We compensated nicely. Yeah, post still annoying. We'll be all right. We'll settle into okay, it. Well, we'll... Let me just, let me just, uh, in case anybody's in doubt, that's the post that's annoying. <laughs> well, watch. Right. Um, well, yeah, but mate, you built a hide. I did. We've only just no. got here. What do we adjust as we go along? I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna. Stop recording now, I want to go out and see what the battery state on that little camera is. <laughs> 